Okay, I'm now going to tie a dazzle leech. I've placed in the vise size 6 Mustad R74 hook onto which I have slid a gold cone, which we'll use for weight, and to help jig that fly through the water. I'm going to tie my tying thread immediately behind the cone, break it off, and carry it rearwards, securing a nice thread base for those materials to adhere to. I'll return back up the hook shank, leave my thread hanging at the midpoint. To enhance the tail, I'm going to tie in three strands of UV crystal flash. And I'm going to sweep the fibers that we're pointing out over the front rearwards, along with the, the uh, fibers pointing backwards, and secure them all together down the hook shank, creating six strands out of three. I'm going to stagger cut the crystal flash so it shimmers throughout the tail. For the tail, I'm going to use some black marabou, nice and bushy, and just strip it off one side of the plume, folding it back onto itself as I strip down the feather from the tip. Moisten the clump and secure it in place so it's at least a shank length and bind all of these butts forwards to make sure they're in there good and tight. Bind all this down. Moisten the tail so you can see how long it is. I like long, slender, flowing tails on my leeches so they really undulate in the water. The body consists of long strand mohair type dubbing. I'm going to form a dubbing loop by pulling down on the tying thread, wrapping the th tying thread around my forefinger, bring the tying thread back up to the hook shank from where I pulled it down, rotate the loop up onto the top of the hook shank, and bind it in place backwards down the hook shank to close it up nice and tight. The loop formed, I'm going to carry my tying thread and open wraps forward the gold cone. I'm going to insert a dubbing hook into the bottom of the loop, pull down slightly on it to pinch the strands together to help hold my dubbing in place. I'm going to take a pinch of dubbing, open the loop at the bottom, and slide that dubbing up into position at the base of the tail. I'm going to apply, take a second clump of dubbing and repeat the process by opening the dubbing loop at the base and sliding it up into position. Avoid the temptation to place your dubbing, open the loop and place your dubbing right below the first clump as the first clump tends to fall out, making dubbing somewhat frustrating. So open the loop, search your dubbing clump, slide it into place till the loop is completely loaded with this long strand dubbing. With the loop loaded, I'm just going to gently spin the tool until the fibers radiate out at 90 degrees. They're good and tight. Makes for a very durable body that can take a lot of chewing. Sweep my tail out of the way and wind this dubbing forward one turn immediately in front of the other using my left thumb and forefinger to sweep these dubbing strands backwards. We're going to brush them and agitate them out later to further enhance the translucence and long strand, the long flowing nature of this long strand dubbing. Just keep using my thumb and forefinger to sweep those fibers back out of the way and tightly pack the dubbing in against this gold cone. With the body formed and well and truly packed, just tie off the balance of the dubbing loop, trim away the excess. Pull down on the tying thread, use your whip finish tool to create the whip finish, 
place it immediately behind the gold cone. With the fly whip finished and glued, we're going to take our dubbing brush and agitate the dubbing on all four sides, gently brushing the fibers back and forth and combing them backwards to bring out the long strands of the dubbing, help create translucence and further add to the flowing nature of the fly. And the dubbing is all crinkly like this. You can take a cup of water from a hot kettle or a or microwave it and dip the front portion, the dub portion of the fly into the dubbing and it will straighten out that long strand dubbing and it will flow back into the marabou tail to further enhance that slim reach profile we're looking for.